Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we're going to talk about, uh, specifically more about boas and pythons cohabbing or not. And we're going to get into a little bit of the cohabbing topic uh, in this brief video. All right, But before we get into that, right in this bottom corner, right there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. We appreciate you doing so. For those that already have, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. So let's get right into this. Okay, so we had one of our subscribers write us in and ask us about doing a video on cohabbing boas and pythons, okay? Well, first off, I'll just say that's not a good idea, okay? It's not. Now, in the grand scope of the world, can you cohab uh, different species together? Yes, absolutely you can. There are a lot of things that you absolutely can cohab together. They do just fine. They live together in the wild. They cohab together just fine in the wild. And for all these idiots that think you can't cohab anything, they're an idiot, okay? Go tell them that in the wild, okay? But there are things that you should not cohab, okay? So doing your research is going to be kind of the biggest thing about if you do any kind of cohabitative ecosystem, then you need to know the species that you're wanting to put in there. You need to do research on the species that you're wanting to put in there. And you need to make sure that one is not going to be an issue for the other. The other's not going to be an issue for one. There's not going to be cross contaminants. Um, they're not food for one another, as, uh, first and foremost. They're not going to kill and eat each other. Um, and that they're not going to cross contaminate things. We try not to go outside of things that already don't live together naturally in the wild and cohab naturally in the wild. Granted, you can have bad moments. I mean, anything in the wild can have a bad moment. You know, again, at the same time, one animal doesn't need 500,000 acres to itself. That's stupid and, and unrealistic. So, when we start talking about cohabbing, okay, so for example, like this right here, the corn snake and the rat snake, these two are actually related. Uh, the corn snake's just a colored rat snake, if we're going to really break it down and be honest about it. This right here, this barn theme, I'm using this as the backdrop just to kind of give the idea because I have these two guys together. They've been together for years and years and years. But again, understand it's about the it, dealing with species that either can go together, is meant to go together, they live together in the wild, or they're not going to be harmful to one another, okay? So when we start talking about boa versus python, all right, now that's what we've been talking about here. You have the boa, you have the python, okay? Those are two bad species to put together. No, you absolutely do not want to put boas and pythons together. For one, boas can and do kill and eat other snakes from time to time. It doesn't happen often, but I have seen it happen before. Anacondas are actually known as snake eaters. They will eat, uh, actively eat other snakes. They'll eat a plenty of other things too, but anacondas are a type of boa constrictor. They're a species of boa constrictor, and they will eat other snakes. Um, you will have boas that will kill and eat other snakes. Not to mention the fact you also have things such as cross-contaminants, diseases, uh, medical issues that can cross over from one animal to another. And these guys aren't even naturally lived together. They, they don't even know each other. They don't, they don't know one another even exists uh, in the grand scope of it. Now, especially things like your ball pythons and Burmese pythons with things like your boas. <clears throat> they just never see each other in the wild. They can cross-contaminate each other with things like IBD and medical issues that can be very detrimental to one or another. It can be stressful for them as, a matter, as well because, again, that's not something they're used to seeing. So these two species can be stressful for one another, especially in most cases. Very seldom are you going to have people setting up things this size. They're going to be putting two different types of snakes in a very small enclosure, and that's just not conducive for the animal's the mental capacity as well. I mean, not that we're worried about him getting depressed or whatever the case may be, but we just don't want to create a stressful environment. So when you do things like cohabbing, like these two guys right here, I mean, they have all of this space right here with all this stuff. They can do whatever they want. Matter of fact, I had to pull both of them out. Both of them were in that bucket right there. Sorry, that bucket right there. They were both curled up together inside the bucket with all that space they have they were curled up inside the bucket together. So you'll see that with ball pythons. A lot of ball pythons, they'll just they'll they'll get into big balls of, of of cluster. Now we do see that things like your ball python and your Burmese can habitate together because you do have people that will cross those over, berms and retakes. It's not necessarily always the best of ideas, 
but it can happen. But I want you to understand that when we start talking about doing things like cohabbing of different species, you do need, especially if you're going to cohab in, you know, in big environments, you're going to have this nice elaborate thing with a few different species in it that can live together. You need to have your quarantine time. That is an absolute must because you don't want to bring something in and give it to your other animals and start killing out your, your collection. Okay, that's, that's the biggest thing, is literally killing out your collection uh, due to cross-contamination of bacteria, fungal issues, or diseases of some form, okay? Now, am I a proponent of completely keeping everything individualized? Absolutely not. Am I a proponent of just cohabbing anything and everything together? Absolutely not. So again, this video is not about being a proponent or an opponent of either or. You can do cohabbing situations. You need to do individualized situations in other circumstances. So you just, again, need to know that your species, you need to know what can go together, can cohab together. And then if you're going to do any kind of cohabitative tank, like this one that has the toads, it has box turtles, it has right there, box turtle, it has the American toads in it, which are... Let's see, where are some of those toads? Ah, there's a couple right there in the corner. You may be up, Rhett, you can see that one right there. And then it has these two snakes, and they all do fine. They all do well together. They are not prey for one another. They're not predatory to one another. And they, generally speaking, are not going to cross-contaminate each other with some form of disease. I mean, especially if they've already been born and raised in captivity and, you know, something like this anyways. It's no big deal. But again, also, go back to quarantine time, understanding the species you're trying to put together, and make sure that they have more than enough space that if you're going to do a cohabitative tank, that they have areas where they can get away from one another if they want to, and it doesn't create that stressful, closed-in, cramped environment. Okay? Now, this is... Can you keep boas and pythons together? I guess is what I probably should have said to begin with. And the, that answer is no. You do not want to keep boas and pythons together. Absolutely, the answer is no. But is there things that you can keep together? The answer is absolutely yes. In the right situation, in the right kind of environments, okay? Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We appreciate you coming along and following along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Also, feel free and check out the uh, the TikTok channel entitled Reptile Rangers, the Instagram page entitled Kernersville Reptile Zoo. Feel free to come check us out here at the zoo. We do have the storefront with pets and all the supplies that you need for them, food as well. And feel free to come check us out here at the zoo. Now, again, we appreciate you coming along week after week after week. Our description will be in the information below in case people need to get in touch with us. People call us all the time. Also, let us know if there's other things you want us to film. We do have a couple of things in the hold um, as this video was getting ready to try and get those videos up for our subscribers. Now, we'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.